Everybody, welcome. This is Intermediate Accounting 17th Edition Video Solution Walkthrough for Problem 23-1. Uh, the textbook Intermediate Accounting 17th Edition, the authors are Don Kiso, Jerry Weingant, and Terry Warfield. The question used in the presentation is copyright 2019 by John Wiley and Sons, all rights reserved. This is for educational purposes only. The video may not be distributed or redistributed without the express permission of Wiley. This solution presentation is copyright 2019 to 2022 by Ben and Tchaikovsky, all rights are reserved. The opinions contained within this presentation are those of Ben and Tchaikovsky and not the authors of the text or Wiley. Okay, let's go ahead and get this going. So um, as we go over here and take a look at problem 23-1, we're gonna kind of follow along the same thing that we've been doing. And that is to go through and to create a cash flow skeleton. So we're gonna have over here, uh, Sullivan Corporation statement of cash flows for the year ended 12-31-20. Cash flows from operating activities, net cash blank, operating activities, cash flows from investing activities, net cash blank investing activities, cash flows from financing activities, net cash blank financing activities. And then we're gonna have our total change in cash which is going to be the difference between the beginning and ending cash balance. So this will be 115,000. And then we're going to have our beginning cash balance, which is 700,000. And this is going to give us our ending cash balance of 815. And then we're going to create a space for non cash transactions. Okay. So we'll go ahead and put this aside over here. And now let's go to our second phase. So our second, our second phase in terms of going through and doing cash flows is to create T accounts. We're gonna have a big cash T account operating. We're gonna have investing. And we're gonna have financing. In addition, what we're gonna go through over here and do is we're gonna have accounts receivable. Opening is a million 68. Ending is 1,128,000. And I'm just gonna drop the zeros and get with the heroes. So let's make it easier ourselves. Let me go ahead and change these down here as well. Okay. Okay, over here, we've got inventory. Our inventory started with a million seven fifteen, ended with a million eight fifty. You have property, plant, and equipment. Opening is twenty nine sixty seven, ending is thirty three oh seven. Accumulated depreciation. Opening is a million forty, ending is one million one sixty five. Investment in Myers. Opening is 275, ending is 310. And then we have accounts payable. Opening is 955, ending is a million 15. Uh, we've got income taxes payable. Opening is 50, ending is 30. We have dividends payable. Opening is 100, ending is 80. Lease liability. Opening is zero, ending is 400. Common stock at par. Opening is 500, ending is 500. Additional paid in capital common stock. Opening is 1500, ending is 1500. Retain earnings. Opening is 2680, ending is 2970. Okay, so let's go through. Once we've done this, we wanna deal with the additional information first. So on December 31st, 2019, they acquired Myers Company for 275,000. 
on that date, the carrying value of Myers assets and liabilities, which approximated their fair values was 1.1 million. So over here, uh, we have our investment in Myers and that's what that's referring to. So during the year, uh, Myers reported 140,000, uh, no dividend was paid and there we go. Okay, so when we're looking at this, this is really about the equity method of accounting. When we're using the equity method of accounting, meaning we own oh, more than 20%, but less than 50, generally, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and take the amount of the net income, which over here is going to be 140. I take that income and I multiply it by my percentage ownership, which is going to be 25%. The way I would journalize this is I would say investment in Myers for 35, and I would be crediting over here income from equity investments. And this over here would be at 35. So for this one in particular, this is gonna be over here. I'm gonna show an investment in Myers of 35, and we'll say over here, uh, net income, or okay, this income from equity investment. Myers, this may not be the exact correct way to go through and do this, but it's gonna go ahead and be a credit. So this is a non-cash uh, item. So we're gonna go ahead and reduce our cash balance from our operating activities, but that's neither here nor there. Similar to other gains we've seen in terms of selling equipment, or if we have an available for sale security, we're generally gonna put that in an operating income. Okay, during 2020, Sullivan loaned $300,000 to TLC, an unrelated company. TLC made the first annual principal payment of 50 plus interest on December 31st. Okay, when we go over here to, and did I screw this up? Let's see here, um, accounts receivable, loan receivable. I dropped it. Yep, okay, so we have a loan receivable. Wow, Bennett, did I miss anything else? Investment of Myers, AP, income taxes, dividends, lease. Okay, well, I just missed it. I should have write, wrote down over here, uh, zero and 250. Okay, so if we're over here looking at loans receivable, when we made the initial loan, and actually, boy, Bennett, you're really losing it today. Oh, it's an asset over here. Loan receivable, right? Loans receivable is an asset, shows a zero beginning balance, ending balance of 250. When I made the loan, okay, like right over here, I'm gonna see, wow, I'm gonna, I'm gonna debit loan receivable for the 300. So I loaned them 300. So I debited loan receivable and I credited cash. So this is loan, I loan to TLC and this is gonna be 300. Now, when the loan is repaid, I'm not gonna worry about the interest portion, but what I am more concerned about, because I'm assuming the interest is already in the net income, what I'm gonna go ahead and do is I will go through and say, okay, they made their principal repayment of 50. So over here, repayment on loan to TLC, And this is gonna be for, wow, Bennett. Okay, I do the opposite to cash or I credit loan, basically loan to TLC. And I'm doing the opposite to cash over here or showing this over here at 50. The net amount of this is I've essentially made an outflow of 250, which is now being reflected by this. I very much apologize. So let's take a step back for a second. My loan receivable has a beginning balance of zero. Okay, it has an ending balance of 250. That's what we saw right up over here in our balance sheet. I made a loan to TLC. So I'm gonna show this as two separate, I made a loan and then they paid me back. So I'm gonna show this as two separate parts. So right over here, the loan amount is gonna show as an investing outflow. If I'm giving a loan to somebody else, that's generally gonna be a non, uh, it's gonna be an investing activity. 
Notice over here, uh, when they say an unrelated company, this is more like an investment. Over here, the repayment on the loan from TLC is gonna be at 50. So when I get, I'm reducing my loan, but I'm also gonna be increasing my cash. And that's why we're showing that as a debit to cash. Okay, let's go over here. On January 2nd, we sold equipment costing 60 with a carrying amount of 38 for $40,000 cash. What do I do when I have an equipment sale? Always going to be the same thing. Loss, balancing, uh, gain, I mean, accumulated depreciation, cash, equipment, gain, balancing. Okay, so if I sold equipment that cost 60 and had a carrying value of 48, that must mean I must have had accumulated depreciation on that equipment of 22. So this is my cost, this is my accumulated depreciation, and this is my net book value or my carrying value of the equipment. When I go to do the journal entry to record an equipment sale, this is what I have to go through and do. I'm debiting equipment for 60. Over here for cash, I'm receiving 40,000. My accumulated depreciation was 22. If I'm getting 40, for something that's worth 38, that must mean I have a gain of two, but again, I've got 62 in debits, I have 60 in credits, what do I need to do to balance? Let's go ahead and put this, this into the T accounts over here for the accumulated depreciation. It is going to be 40, oh, it's well done it. My accumulated depreciation is gonna be 22. Wow, I'm really losing it today. Uh, sorry about that, kids. Um, I will promise to rebound here shortly. Okay, I'm debit debiting accumulated depreciation for 22. I am crediting equipment for 60. Okay. Now, in terms of the cash proceeds that I receive, I'm going to put here sale of equipment. And this balance here will be the 40 that I received. And then the gain is gonna show as a credit in the operating section. All right. Okay, that is additional information number three. Additional information number four on over here, we, we number four, we entered into a capital lease for an office building. The present value of the annual rental payments is 400,000, which equals the fair value of the building. Sullivan made the first rental payment when due in 2021. What we have to go through and do here is when we're entering into a lease. So it's a capital lease, whether it be a capital or an operating lease. What we're really looking for here is the present value of the annual rental payments. The way I would go through and record this would be leased asset or right to use asset. And I would be crediting lease liability. Okay, and this would be for 400,000. When you look at this particular transaction, right? If we do this as a journal entry. So when I enter into a lease, this is what I have to go through and do. So right over here, I'm going to credit lease liability and I'm going to go ahead and debit property, plant, and equipment because there is no account specifically for a lease asset, but this is how I go through and record it. Now, what you notice about this is that I just signed a lease. There's no cash going on. So what I have to go through and do is say that we entered into a $400,000 capital lease. So you would say something to that extent. Okay. So right over here, uh, net income was 370. Okay, so right over here, net income is 370. Do the opposite to cash. I'm gonna say net income right over here at 370. All right. Now, Sullivan declared and paid the following cash dividends for 2020 and 2019. So in 2019, they declared a dividend of basically 
right over here of in 2019, it was for 100,000. When I do journal entries for dividends, when I declare a dividend, I'm going to debit dividends. I'm going to credit dividends payable. And then when I pay the dividend, so this was on 12, 15, 19, and this would be on 2, 28, 20. When I pay the dividend, I'm going to debit dividends payable. I'm going to credit cash. So over here for 2019, this was for $100,000. Now, I'm not as concerned about 2019 because my focus is really on what was going on in 2020. So over here, when I look at dividends payable being debited for 100, let's go over here. I'm going to debit dividends payable. And I'm going to show in financing, I'm going to show this as a payment of a dividend. So I'm going to show this over here as a credit for 100. So again, when I, I settled the liability in 2020, this is really from 2019, but I settled it in 2020. So I'm debiting dividends payable and I am crediting the cash section here, the financing, because I paid the money this year. That's when I paid it. So that's what I have to show on my cash flow. Let's take a look at 2020. So over here, I declared it on 12, 15, 20. When I declare a dividend, it's going to be the same thing. This is 80 and 80. So what I now have to do, and this part over here, I'm not as concerned with because that happens in 2021. I'm more focused on what happens in 2020, but I'm going to come over here. I'm going to debit retain earnings for 80, and I'm going to go ahead and credit dividends payable for 80. So if you notice here now, this dividends payable account magically balances, but it's not that it's magic. It's just that this is what happened in the account. And this is what we need to do to go through and reflect on these, on this particular transaction. So now that I've gone through and I've done, dealt with the additional information, I can now look at the individual T accounts. So my accounts receivable to make this balance, I need a credit of 40. So I'm going to do the opposite to cash, or I'm going to debit cash, and I'm going to describe it by what's happening in the T account. So this is going to be a decrease in accounts receivable. Inventory went from 1715 to 1850. So over here, I'm going to show this as a credit. When I look at property, plant, and equipment, I've got 2967 plus the 400 from the capital lease minus the 60 from the asset sale, and I am miraculously balanced. Over here, okay, so 1,040, basically 1,165, right down over here. So 1,040. Plus X minus 22, 20, uh, minus 22 is equal to 1,165. This is gonna be X plus, 1018 equals 1165. Okay, so X is going to be equal to 147. Okay, so this over here is what I need to balance my accumulated depreciation account. So for this one over here, when I'm recording accumulated depreciation on equipment, this is going to be depreciation expense, or this is the implied entry. We have accumulated depreciation, and this is going to be for 147 and 147. So over here, this is going to show up as a debit. This is going to be for depreciation expense. 275 plus 35 is 310. Accounts payable to balance this one transaction. I need a credit of 60, so I'm going to do the opposite to cash. This is an increase in accounts payable. Income taxes payable. Opening balance was uh, 50. Ending balance was 30. To make this balance, this is a 20. So I'm going to call this over here a decrease in income taxes payable. And I'm going to do the opposite to cash. I'm going to credit cash for 20. 
dividends payable. This is balanced 100 minus 100 plus 80 minus 100 is 80. Lease liability is balanced. Zero plus 400 is 400. Nothing happened over here with the common stocks. Over here with retaining earnings, 2,680 plus 370 minus 80 is going to give me 2970. So that's also balanced. Loan receivable is balanced. So I'm ready to go through and do the magic. All right. It's not magic, it's just addition. So, or the math and accounting that we love. All right. So over here, my net increase in operating. So my, hold on, my net cash, wow, provided by operating activities is 425. I subtract my smaller from the larger balance. This is my net cash used in investing activities. Just really quickly, I'm kind of going through this fast, right? So if you're new to this channel, I have a sequence of different videos that I've been making specifically as it relates to cash flows. So I would actually, believe it or not, even though this is the first problem in the sequence, I would probably watch this last after you've gone through the other videos that are in this. Okay, so over here for basically for financing, this is net cash used in financing activities. When I come down over here and I am checking my work, my cash provided by operating activities was 425. My cash used in investing activities was 210. Over here, my cash used in financing activities was 100. So over here, I've got a total of, subtract the smaller from the larger. This is gonna be a total cash increase of 115, which is what we have over here. So now what I'm gonna go through and do is I'm gonna now basically do the final step, which is going through and preparing the cash flow itself. When I prepare a cash flow, I'm essentially going to the T account and I'm basically borrowing the various different descriptions uh, that I came up with. And when it comes to over here, as far as how do I actually show this on the cash flow? So anything that is a debit is going to show up as a positive amount on the statement of cash flows. Anything over here On the credit side will show up as a negative amount. So when it comes to doing this, that's how I go through and then come up with that dollar amount. So that's our net cash provided by financing activity. So I mean net cash provided by operating activities. Okay, so let's go to the next one. Cash flows for investing activities loan to TLC, repayment on a loan, and then a sale of equipment. And then we're gonna have net cash used in, so this is gonna be negative 300 because these are debits. I'm gonna go ahead and record those as such. And that's gonna be negative 210. For my cash flows from financing activities, all I had over here was the payment of a dividend. This is a credit, so it's going to be a negative amount. So my net cash used in financing activities is going to be this 100. So as I go over here, that's what I will go through and end up with. So that's how my numbers over here balance. So again, my I would give my rating on this creation of a YouTube video, uh, not the very, not my very, not my finest hour. But what I will say is this, is that go through all the other ones that I've done for this particular sequence of videos first, and then end up with this one over here. Hopefully that'll make a lot more sense. 
I do plan at some point to make a, a video series on cash flows because this is typically what gives CPAs the greatest difficulty of how do you prepare a cash flow. But what I will say is that if you have the T accounts and you're going through and doing it this way, it'll make a lot more sense. So in any event, I want to thank you for being with me here today. And I also want to thank Wiley for allowing me to use their material, their questions and providing solutions just for you. And I look forward to seeing on you on the next video. Have a great day.